us talk about one of the important clinical scenario related to the median nerve injury which is called as carpal tunnel syndrome. Carpal tunnel syndrome is a peripheral neuropathy which is mainly caused by the chronic or acute compression of the median nerve by the transverse carpal ligament. Remember the point, this is very important point for you to remember that this is the most common entrapment neuropathy of the upper extremity that is out of all the entrapment neuropathy of the upper extremity 90% of all the cases are mainly due to the compression of the median nerve that is the carpal tunnel syndrome. Now what are the causes etiology? There are like several occupational and non-occupational risk factors have been associated with this condition. So let us throw some light on some of the risk factors which are associated with the carpal tunnel syndrome. Most often it may be due to previous fracture of the distal radius which is considered to be one of the most important risk factor or traumatic dislocation of the lunate. So whenever there is a traumatic dislocation of the lunate, the lunate bone is going to compress the nerve or maybe because of the manual work. So there will be an increased risk in the workers using vibrating tools or prolonged forceful and repetitive flexion and extension of the wrist. So occupational uh, risk factors we can say. And some of the conditions like rheumatoid arthritis and other type of chronic inflammation of the tendon sheets can also cause uh, a compressive neuropathy of the median nerve in the carpal tunnel. And other common factors include pregnancy uh, because the recent studies have shown that the carpal tunnel syndrome may affect up to 62% of the pregnant women. And some of the common uh, risk factors include obesity, osteoarthritis, diabetes with peripheral polyneuropathy and hypothyroidism. All these are considered to be the possible risk factors for the development of carpal tunnel syndrome. Now let us discuss about what is the pathophysiology behind this condition. Remember the point, any event or condition that increases the pressure within the carpal tunnel causes compression of the structures which are present within it, right? So whenever there is a compression of the nerve or compression of the structures, there will be impaired blood flow to the nerve itself and there will be an alteration in the microvasculature structure within the median nerve because the nerve also requires the blood supply. So whenever the nerve is compressed, the microvasculature which is present between the nerve also gets ruptured or compressed. So because of this, there will be an inflammatory reaction and the outcome of the inflammatory reaction will be edema and hypoxia and finally leads to axonal degeneration and this axonal degeneration is characterized by both sensory disturbances which includes pain, tingling and numbness and motor symptoms like weakness and clumsiness of the thumb in the area which is innervated by the median nerve distal to the carpal tunnel because the manifestations are mainly seen distal to the injury. So, as I already mentioned about the palmar cutaneous branch of the median nerve because which gives off branch before the nerve enters the carpal tunnel. Therefore, the palmar surface of the thenar eminence is spared. The sensory innervation of this area is supplied by the superficial branch of the median nerve which arises 5 to 7 centimeters proximal to the carpal tunnel. Therefore, the nerve is spared in the injury, right? Now, let us focus on what are the clinical manifestations which are associated with this. If the injury is mild to moderate, the sensory manifestations may be in the form of uh, like uh, the palmar surface of the thumb, index and middle finger and radial half of the ring finger. In these areas, there will be a burning sensation, paresthesia or loss of sensation or numbness and especially these symptoms worsen at night. So therefore, especially in the cases, this is how they will mention that the symptoms worsen at the night. If the injury is moderate to severe, motor symptoms are most often seen because motor symptoms are not commonly seen if there is a milder form of an injury, right? Or if there is a 
less severe form of an injury. So motor symptoms are mainly due to an involvement of the motor fibers of the median nerve innervating the thenar muscles such as abductor pollicis brevis, opponent's pollicis and superficial head of the flexor pollicis brevis, right? And because of this, there will be weakened pinch and grip. Therefore, the patients often complain of dropping of the objects. And in rare conditions, we can see if the injury is very severe, we can see that the thenar atrophy with the flattening of the muscles which are present in that location and impaired thumb apposition. This is what we can see if there is a severe form of an injury. But uh, less commonly, we can see such kind of manifestations these days because injury is most often will be mild to moderate. That's it. And the presence of clinical symptoms and signs of the carpal tunnel syndrome will be the hand elevation test, carpal compression test and phalanx test. Because whenever you perform these tests and when these test results are positive, it should raise the suspicion but the diagnosis must be confirmed only with a specific neurological tests like EMG or ENG, right? Now, let us concentrate more on the diagnostic tests here. In the diagnostic test, we have the provocative test. So, remember the point that there is no agreement as to which provocative test should be used to support the diagnosis of the carpal tunnel syndrome because several authors suggest combining two or more provocative tests to improve the specificity of the diagnosis. So first let us talk about what is the hand elevation test. Now let us concentrate on this uh, animated demonstration of the test guys. The hand is held above the head of the patient for approximately two minutes and the test is considered to be positive if the symptoms of carpal tunnel syndrome that is paresthesia numbness are reproduced. And this test is easy to perform in a clinical setting and has a higher sensitivity and specificity when compared to any other tests. And another important test will be carpal compression test or Durkheim's test. So what is this test uh, about? By applying moderate compression with the finger directly over the proximal edge of the carpal tunnel, the examiner may elicit paresthesia in the distribution of the median nerve. So this is what is about uh, the Durkheim's test. Next, let us focus about another important test for the median nerve injury, which is the phalanx test. In this phalanx test, the wrist is actively or passively held in full flexion, as you can see in this image. If occurrence or aggravation of paresthesia in the fingers, which are innervated by the median nerve, is perceived within one minute, the test is considered to be positive. This finding is considered to be highly specific, that is approximately in 85% of the cases, it is considered to be specific for the diagnosis of the carpal tunnel syndrome. And next will be tenel sign. So what is the tenel sign? Percussion or tapping with the fingertips over the carpal tunnel leads to shooting pain and or paresthesias in the fingers that are innervated by the median nerve called as tenel sign, right? So these are the provocative tests, guys. But what are the electrophysiological tests for the diagnosis of CTS? The nerve conduction studies is considered to be the confirmatory test and uh, prolongation of the distal motor and sensory latency can be identified with this. An electromyogram which actually explains the pattern of neurogenic disorder, which shows the abnormal spontaneous activity, or there may be a decreased activity potentials with uh, large amplitude. And this is what is about the nerve conduction test. Now, another one of the important terminology you all need to know whenever we come across the median nerve injury is the Pope's blessing. You can see in this image very clearly. It is called as Pope's blessing sign. What exactly is the Pope's blessing? So Pope's blessing sign is seen in the median nerve injury patients where the patients are unable to flex the first three digits when making a first. Remember, it is not a symptom of the carpal tunnel syndrome. It is only seen in proximal lesions of the median nerve. That is whenever the median nerve injury is proximal 
to the carpal tunnel syndrome or median nerve injury is most often in the arm or upper part of the forearm. Now let us concentrate finally on the treatment part of the carpal tunnel syndrome. If the symptoms are mild to moderate, conservative treatment is recommended for the patients. That includes immobilization of the wrist with a padded volar splint which is worn during the night and steroid injection may be administered and uh, also to reduce the pain we most often give short-term treatment with non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. But if the symptoms are moderate to severe and if there is no response which has been shown to conservate your treatment, open or endoscopic release of the transverse carpal ligament is indicated because by this you are going to relieve the pressure which has been created within the carpal tunnel. So this is what is about uh, the carpal tunnel syndrome.